Baby, let's just dance, dance. Let's just dance, baby. I just wanna dance, 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 dance. Can you Welcome back to the bar. Here we are with part two. Oh, yay. <laughs> uh, I can't stand this episode. So welcome back to the bar. Bitch number one, Christy here. Bitch number two, Kelly over here. Anxiously awaiting this day. Bitch number three, James, you came back. He's, I'm came so back. excited you're back. How are you guys doing today? Uh, miserable. Yes. We're all miserable. Kind of a crazy day. Just a smidge. Yeah, yes. we're, we're all like, our lives suck. Let's talk about Abby to get in a better mood. Oh, yes, yeah, so that'll make it better. Mm-hmm. It's totally the thing that puts me in a spectacular mood every time. Wait, <laughs> before we even get into Patreons, Kelly, did you hear what's happening with the studio? I heard it's selling. Yeah, she sold the studio, but they're doing some sort of like an online auction or an auction. Yeah, work. I heard about so that. I- Diane was looking at this video and she's like, cause remember her and Fred used to go over to her house all the time and like clean things out. Yeah. Yeah. She said they literally brought all of Abby's shit from her house. She's like, there's old dirty tennis shoes. I died. Oh my goodness. Because you said they smell. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I seriously, we had to put them in Ziploc baggies because they stunk the whole hotel room up. (laughs) I'm looking at James's face. Swear to God. And uh, his shoes. Gross. Yeah. I thought you'd appreciate that. Yes. That's- All right. Before we get into this, let's start off by thanking all of our Patreon subscribers. These are people who went over to patreon.com slash back to the bar and subscribe to our super exclusive after party behind the scenes content. All of the good stuff that you're not going to hear here that you're going to have to go over there to get the really, really hot tea. So let's thank Alan, John, Julia, Olivia, Vinny, Allie, Lily, Fran, Pat, Olivia, Brianna, Kawara, Casey, Nikki, Candy Coated, Tony, Hannah, Vera, Abby, Michelle, Emily, Emma, Kelly, Kendall, Taylor, Jordan, Caitlin, Caitlin, Maddie, Bridget, Chicken Bum Bum, Emily, <laughs> Heather, Dez, Talia, Laurel, Emily, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Ashley, Sarah, Lexi, Ellie, Lucy, Molly, Gabrielle, Elizabeth, Mitchell, Corona King, Aino, Shane, Katie, Sam, Bailey, Mara, Brianna, Nina, Megan, Carly, Chloe, Sophia, Amy, Kayla, Leslie, Kaylee, Anna, Jay, Taylor, Christopher, Maria, Katie, Rachel, Emily, Grace, Caitlin, Caroline, Ashley, Gabby, Lindy, Jay Bent, Michi, Marja, Anna, Sarah, Carolyn, Pepper Potts, Lexi, Emily, Jess, Jillian, Marie, Christine, Anna, Sarah, Gwendolyn, Izzy, Jacob, Catherine, Bethany, Allison, Grace, and Alexi. That was a lot. James, our list never goes down. Mm-hmm. It's like every week we keep thinking that it's going to go down, and every week we have so many. It's so exciting. No, that's We're great. Popular. Who knew? I know. Who knew these two bitches? People would like them. Mm, Kelly, I, mean, I, I like knew, your but... shirt. I know I wore that just for you. I did not iron it because it looked okay. really bad. But... I'm not going to judge you. But well, that's a good thing. What are you guys drinking? I am very boring. I couldn't be more boring. I have, which is something I don't like, white wine. Oh, it's from my Advent thing from Brooke. I have it left over, um, but. I, look, I got a square cup. I love that cup. I found that at Marshall's. James, but, what are you drinking? Uh, I too am doing the white wine because <laughs> twinnies. I, I couldn't do another Manhattan. T- uh, couple, yeah, couple Manhattans than working. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, we're triplets. <laughs> I'm drinking Chloe in honor of Chloe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Love so myself some Chloe. Mine. I have to pour mine. And um, uh, I'm just going to shut up and let you talk because there's a lot to unpack here emotionally. Oh, 
as a viewer, as a producer, as a cast member, there's just a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. and I have a little, I have a little charcuterie today. Oh, good for you. I'm jealous. I love myself. One of those. Well, mine's just a beignet. It's not really. I haven't had one in a while. I haven't either. My little snacks. Diane I usually brought- bring snacks. Yeah. Diane brought me a beignet. Is she still there? She's up at my house right now yelling at people. I love her. There you go. She's like cracking the whip. Good. And she's like, listen, well if you sit pain. here and get the tile out back done, I will sit here and talk to you the whole time because they keep stopping to talk to her. And she's like, I will leave, I will sit here and talk to you. Gotta love Diane. Yeah. All right. So where did we leave off? We leave off of us going to the Joffrey audition. So <sighs> They show us walking in to the audition building and we all have our little pink coats on and um, Abby is wearing fur. Have a drink already. But we go to interview and Abby's telling us again what Joffrey is and what's at stake. And she's, you know, this is a big deal. It's intense. And Abby tells the girls that this is the beginning of their shot. And they have, so they have something to work for. And you say, Christy, that um, this could make or break someone's career because ballet is the foundation of all dance. (laughs) Well, you know, I've got to set those stakes pretty high. Yeah. So did this make or break Chloe's career? I'm going to go with no, but (laughs) who knows? knows? Maybe maybe her life would have been shit had she not won or whatever, gotten the scholarship. So Abby reminds the girls that, you know, they're re- representing her themselves, but they are also representing the ALDC. So, you know, we better behave. And then they show the candy apples walking into the Joffrey building. And we are like, ugh, because we hear Kathy's voice. And Christy, you do another interview saying that um, Chloe is warming up in the hall. And then I hear Beaker from Sesame Street sounds. <laughs> girls, girls, girls. And, oh, Kathy has arrived. And you had your giant suitcase <laughs> in the hallway. Why was your suitcase there? I have no idea. Yeah, you have one of those big suitcases sitting next to you. And I'm like, that's a little hallway, Kel. I don't know. Maybe because um, I ma- wanted to make sure I had the perfect leotard. So I probably had a suitcase full of leotards in case Abby made me cha- have my kids change. Could be why. You're Always prepared. be prepared. Yes. Um, so Kathy comes in, she starts talking, and then I go to interview and say that Candy Apples needs to get a life and quit following us around. Because <laughs> they always did follow us. Everywhere we went, they would show up. There's the life. That they did. Yeah. But Kathy is, you know, giving her kids like a little last minute ballet class. And Abby says that if they don't get it yet, then they're not going to know it. So. Um, and Kathy hollers at her, stop voicing your opinion because it doesn't matter here. <laughs> Could you imagine if um, Kathy had said to Abby, don't bother with the ballet class? Abby would have literally like spontaneously combusted. Yeah. Distinct James, James, how did Kathy feel about Abby? Like when Abby would do shit like that, did, did she get, because I know they, I mean, they were, they weren't really friends. They were colleagues, but. Did she really like get mad at Abby or was it just like acting for the show? I don't remember her ever really being mad at Abby. I think she was just kind of like, sorry, my dog's waiting and something. I <laughs> think she more thought that like, you know, it's for the show. <laughs> it was for the show, but also like, I think that Abby thought she was better than Kathy and Kathy thought she was better than Abby. So yeah, that's what I meant. Did, did yeah. Kathy think that Abby thought that, that she was better? And Kathy did not agree, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, like, <laughs> Kathy thought that Abby was a uh, subpar. My impression that Kathy, Kathy thought Abby was subpar. But okay. I will, you know, all yeah. caveats that I I didn't grill Kathy as to her true feelings about yeah. Ms. Okay. Lee Miller. Yes. So we have Kathy in the interview, and she says that they have a right to be in the exact same place that Abby is. And... Kathy sees Jill talking to Abby and Jill says on her interview, running into Abby changed her and Kendall's mood, but oh, wow. Same. We always feel, everybody feels that way as soon as we. 
I have never known anyone to <clears throat> suck energy out of a room quite like that woman. Anybody disagree? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No disagreements here. Jill or Jill or Kathy? No, uh, Abby. Oh. Abby. <laughs> Yeah. So then one of the judges, his name is David Rob- Davis Robertson, um, comes out and says that they're ready to watch the solos. And Abby gives her last minute advice to the girls and says, shoulders down, big smile and use your face. Use that face. Yes. So Paige gets to go in first for her audition. And, you know, she has a leap in her dance. She has a handstand press. She has an aerial. And, you know, you, as she's doing it, you see one of the judges, like, make a face when she does her aerial. And then, um, I don't know, I just think that it's, her dance was not very much Joffrey material. I agree with that. Yes. I do agree. Then we have Brooke's audition. And Abby tells her to make it look easy because that's what's impressive about Brooke. Sure, and, that's the one thing that's impressive about Brooke. Yeah, yeah, but it is not impressive to a ballet school. Yeah. So Brooke's in an interview, and she says that she's concerned because some judges hate tricks. Brooke is so wise. Yeah, I mean, like her being on her chin, rolling around on the floor. Yeah, it. I I do agree with you. With I'm really surprised that Abby. I don't know, like. I'm surprised that she went that route with the girls knowing it's ballet, but okay. I mean, she knew exactly what the hell she was doing. Absolutely. No, Abby would never, if Abby wanted one of those kids to win the scholarship, she would have never had an acrobatic thing in there. Right. Right. Abby knows. Hamstringing Brooke and Paige and Kenzie and Nia by being like, right. Yeah. For sure. I'm going to ruin your chance because I'm going to put this in. Yeah. Exactly. And, could and we knew that going in, believe me. Gone in and changed their choreography. Ooh. We would have been killed, yes. Yeah. But one of the judges um tells Brooke that you know she's not a fan of tricks. And you know, Brooke's like, Well, I had to do what my teacher told me. So you got tricks. <laughs> then Nia goes in and she does the same thing. She has tricks in it. And um we see Holly standing outside looking nervous. And Abby says, Holly, are you nervous? You're, you're pacing. And Holly says she, she is. And Abby says, that's what I used to do. I used to throw up in a bucket outside. <laughs> and we're like, ew. <laughs> and Holly's like, you got a bucket? Uh, but Nia finishes her performance with the death drop. Because that is definitely ballet school material yeah for sure yeah, yes anything, anything you learn from a drag queen who yeah. came in like third <laughs> on rupaul's drag race i'm sure is really gonna like thrill the joffrey judges yes <laughs> but but what is so cute is we see nia in her interview saying i think i did pretty well i hope i get the scholarship oh, oh jesus christ i'm thinking that <laughs> they actually you know had some hope oh my so then we go to Mackenzie. And she does her little dance and she has a round up a handspring in hers. And the judge Davis says, you jumped, you flipped and you twirled a lot, but you got to tell whoever told you to shake your bum bum like that, that they're a dumb dumb. <laughs> I didn't even see her shake her bum. They didn't like have that part of the I did. She like turned around and did like two or three like shakes to the back. Uh, okay. It wasn't how funny. how it about was shake your bum bum? You're a dumb dumb. Yeah, I would love to. Wasn't deliver he creative? <laughs> exactly. Hmm. So then we go to Mackenzie in an interview, and she's like, "Hey, Abby taught me to shake my bum bum, and I shake it pretty well." <laughs> Did you tell her to say that, James? No. <laughs> James is like my my interviews are have much better lines than that. Part one, my line, my interviews have better lines than that. Part two, I was also quite after the dust up about the uh, fan dance in the Vegas showgirl episode. I was very conscious as to not try to do anything that might be interpreted as sexualizing, you know, 10 year olds. Yes. Smart. Yeah. I think that's a good route to take. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good life lesson for anyone. It's, it is. It is something good Thank you for being here for the people. So then we see Kathy standing outside the door, like watching her students do their auditions. And after the one girl's performance, um, the same judge that said she wasn't a fan of the tricks tells her that her makeup is a little over the top for a ballet audition. Yeah. And I felt really redness. bad for her though. Yeah. I felt bad but for all I, of I do agree that the makeup was too much, but I feel bad anytime a kid is like criticized for something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I felt the same way when the judge said to Brooke, you don't like tricks. Brooke just stood there like, I mean, what do you say to that? Yeah, you, know? no, you, you kind of feel stupid just standing there like, okay, well, you don't like my eyeshadow. I'll go home now. Right, right. That's so like, I can have, you know, Katie Hackett feet and like, because yeah. I have like crappy eyeshadow. Yeah, you're gonna be like, yeah, you, you're like, going to throw me out because I have eyeshadow on. But my teacher told me to wear. Kathy's the one that tells tells them to wear that purple crap. Of course, Kathy herself wears that purple crap. Yeah. So Kendall, you know, everybody's telling her good luck. It's time for her audition. And Jill's in an interview and says that Kendall is a beautiful little dancer. And Jill hopes that she gets the scholarship. Go, James, go. Just have at it. I mean, I just feel like every time I did an interview with Jill, it was like, Kendall's a beautiful little dancer. <laughs> it like, was always like, little, Kendall. Little. Yeah. I just yeah, always that little. in every interview. <clears throat> Was Kendall the youngest of the girls? Yeah. Well, of our girls or Jill's? I know of Jill's girls. Yeah. Yes. Maybe that yeah. was it. Maybe. I did feel like there's a lot of like infantilizing of Kendall that happened. Yes. I, I agree with that. And her sisters are both, I don't want to say considerably older, but they're close in age. And Kendall's what, like five or six years younger than like mm-hmm. the one. So she was like the baby. But yeah, yeah. she definitely always used the adjective little. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And people but, know that. Like everybody yeah. who, who mocks or like does impressions of Jill, it's always little Kendall. Yeah. <laughs> well, little Kendall does her performance. And um judge number two, who's the center judge and keeps saying everything, tells Kendall that she enjoyed the arms at the beginning of the piece. <laughs> I'm assuming she didn't like anything else because she only liked her arms at the beginning. Just the arms. <laughs> arms were fabulous. So then we have Chloe. She does hers. And um, before Chloe enters the room, you give her a little pep talk and you say, this is your forte. You go to ballet and look. you look like a ballerina and you have a beautiful body. Go in there and own it. Oh, he looked like a ballerina. Like that was, oh, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely. You know, like this was definitely in her wheelhouse. Like, yes. You know, if it's not, it's not an acro dance. So we know that she's okay. So I'm like, well, ballet is your thing. One thing I did want to say though, real quick, and I forgot to mention this. Why do all of Kathy's students have on black ballet sh- or black jazz shoes for a ballet audition? Did you notice that? No. They were all wearing pink, like black Leo's pink tights and black jazz shoes. Hmm. It was the weirdest thing. But yeah, yeah. So Chloe goes in there. She does it. But I have to say um, the dramatic music that Post used. Come on, you guys. Like little subtle. Not at all. <laughs> you mean as <laughs> reflecting Chloe's dark, evil personality that she. Oh, yes. No, it was triumphant ballet like Tchaikovsky. (laughs) So we see Chloe in the interview and she says that she's excited. She's never done anything this big in her dance life. And um, it's every man for himself. So we see Christy watching Chloe's audition. I mean, Chloe's dance basically was the only one that I thought was really ballet. Her and Maddie's. But I thought Chloe's was definitely ballet. Yeah, and like we said yesterday, there were no tricks in it, but that's Chloe doesn't do tricks usually. Did Maddie have any tricks in hers? I don't know. She, I feel like Abby always put in that front aerial, but Maddie yeah. was on the ground some, which Chloe, I don't think, as she may have been, I don't remember. I mean, even Maddie was like on the ground doing her like little touchy face thing. Yeah. Or Chloe like stood up and turned. I'm certain that Maddie did as well, but okay. you just didn't see it. So one of the judges says, um, your natural, natural God-given ability is fantastic. Um, you really have something special. Uh, please get into more ballet classes. 
and Chloe yeah. smiles and walks out. Mm-hmm. And in her interview, Chloe says that the judge's feedbacks makes her nervous that maybe she doesn't have enough ballet training for the draw free, but you never know what the judges are thinking. They're thinking you, production might give them a call. Yeah. Um, you give hug, Chloe a big hug and kiss her on the forehead and said that uh, she should be proud of herself. Mm-hmm. Then we see Maddie in audition and she um, says she's going up against going up against Chloe is hard because Chloe is more of a ballerina and she's nervous since they don't do ballet often. And there's three ballet judges and we did not, we've not had ballet in two years at this point. No. And prior to the show starting, Chloe had done, I think it was that. Ye- yeah, it was that year in January or February. She was one of the kids from the studio who had been selected by the ballet teachers to do the Youth American Grand Prix. So she had had like a lot of ballet, like up until February. But by this point, we were already like a year later. Yeah. And so it wasn't like, yeah. Yeah, My kids hadn't had ballet class in years. (laughs) So it had been at least a year since she was like intensely doing ballet. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so we see uh, Maddie practicing with Abby and, you know, Abby's whispering corrections to her and Maddie goes in and performs and in the hallway, we see Melissa and Chloe watching and the judge Davis tells her that um, she knows how to perform and she has showmanship, but that's great for Broadway, but you have to be a dancer to get Joffrey. Like legitimately the... If I recall correctly, I mean, I mean, it's like it's also it runs into the like the game show rules, like from the '50s scandals. Like if we're giving away something of value, like like the producers couldn't go in there and say like, "Give it to Maddie." Like that really was one of those where we're like, "Here's an opportunity." Like if Kenzie wins it, then we got to figure out a way to create a story around it. Like, yes, but you guys had something over it by giving people dances that weren't appropriate and stuff i mean so you basically but i mean that's also that's also not gonna give it like we can go in and say like hey give give this person this kind of dance like that's yeah that was abby but I, Giada, what, what i'm like, saying is is abby basically knew what she yeah, was oh, doing really? going yeah. in there. it was either saying, gonna like, be abby. between maddie or chloe and then we were going from there yeah. basically i mean like abby abby did that but it wasn't like we went to the joffrey and said it'd be great if chloe wins this one yeah. You know, what's interesting about that, I didn't think about that, James, is with the Joffrey, I I never stepped back and thought about it. But I do know with any sort of like reality game show, there are really big rules in place. So I didn't think about that with that perspective. So that's an interesting take, because obviously, like, if you win a competition, there's no value. But this had supposedly like a market value to it. So that is interesting. Yeah. Abby definitely like gave Maddie and Chloe the Best the, the leg ballet up. quarter. Yeah. Um you know, that wasn't something the producers weighed in on I'll that I was aware of. Later. Yeah. I'll ask this later. All right, go ahead. Cal. So then we have the judge is telling Maddie that um she just wanted to see like a pause and to let her bon- body finish before she moved on to the next moment. Mm-hmm. And um that they tell her to continue to work hard. And they said something about have her do releve, it could be better. Mm. Um, so I don't know what that meant. Maybe when she was doing something in releve, it wasn't all the way up in releve. I don't, I didn't quite get that. You didn't pick up on that, Christy? I did, but I just was like, um, I, I did definitely see them tell her that. But again, I'm, I, I was surprised to show, to see anything. Cause that was one thing that I know Abby intentionally did. So again, this was, it was a different situation because it wasn't Abby being the teacher, giving her corrections. Abby would never correct Maddie on camera ever because she didn't want it to seem like she was anything but perfect at everything she did. And so I was surprised to see anything, even air that showed that she had room for improvement. Yeah. But that was behind closed doors. The judges, Abby had no idea True. what those judges said. Yeah. So it was whoever was in editing that left that in there. Cause Abby would have no idea what they said. 
Sure, 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 sure. But so we see um, Maddie telling Abby, you know, what the judges said. And we go to interview and Abby says, um, Maddie wasn't confident after her audition. Um, She takes things very seriously and very much to heart. We see Kathy's kids practicing in the hallway and Kathy says really loud. We all know that Kendall has the training and uh, has been training in other places. <laughs> We've just tweaked out all the bad habits that she's <laughs> gathered along the way. I do, like dig Abby. <laughs> I do love uh, 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 Kathy's not afraid to dig, which I love. About. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Jill tells Kathy or Jill tells Abby that Kathy has gotten Kendall many opportunities and Kathy asks how the moms at the candy apples have been. And Jill says that they've been great. And Kathy says, probably that's why I have 300 students versus your 20. I don't have a problem embracing new customers. Again, I mean, we saw people leave constantly, you know, because they mm-hmm. didn't like the crap. So mm-hmm. not shocked. So we see Abby and Kathy, you know, bickering back and forth and about how many students they've had at Joffrey and Kathy refuses to say how many, because it means nothing, you know, it -hmm. shouldn't mean anything to Abby. And Kathy's in interview and says, I honestly feel that Abby Lee Miller gang thinks that they've got the market on anything that has to do with dance. They're nothing but trouble. And it was fun to get Abby's feathers ruffled. I called it the Abby Lee Miller dance or the Abby Lee Miller company instead of the Abby Lee Miller gang. I think she said. Oh, did she call it a gang? I thought that was funny because James, you know this too. Like Abby would not say candy apples on camera because she didn't want to like promote her business. But we always had to say like ALDC. Yeah. So I like the fact that Kathy found a way around saying Abby Lee Dance Company. So Kathy, Kathy and Abby both were quite funny about like. I'm not giving that woman any free publicity. Yeah. You're know, like, okay. Well, we ended up getting that way at the end, Christy. Remember, Abby wanted us <laughs> to wear nothing but Abby Lee Miller dance yeah. company like logos on our dance wear. Uh, yeah, Christy, we're like, hell no, no, no. <laughs> like you hate my kids. Everybody else wore them though. We were like the rebels. It was like, no Never. way. You're mean to my kid. I ain't doing anything to help your ass out. Yeah. So. They go back in and they're doing like group, like a group ballet class. Um, and the, we're waiting outside all in the hallway. And me and Kathy are standing at the door, um, like so we can see into the audition. And Kathy's looking in and I'm just like leaning on the wall. And Kathy says number 250 was flopping her foot and bringing it back. Oh, Oh, sorry. That was your child, Kelly. Your face when she said this, you turn around, you're like, like you had a little moment of being a dance mom there. It was funny. <laughs> Who the hell says that shit though? Yeah. Oh, I know. Kathy? You're Kathy. Yeah. So I say Kathy. And then she imitates me. Kathy, it's all you guys can say. <laughs> so we go and we're bickering back and forth about the etiquette, you know, in an audition. And she keeps egging me on, like to fight with her in the hallway. And I did pretty good, I have to say. I after that, I kind of shut up. And then everybody else got came. Yeah, I'm gonna in. say you volley that run right over to me. I did. I knew I would be getting into a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, so later we see Kathy in the corner. She's eating pizza. She didn't even offer us any. Where did she get a pizza, like a full on folded New York style pizza? And she's just chomping it in the corner. Jane, did you bring her a pizza? Probably a PA went and got it for her. Yeah. They forgot mine. I think I was hungry. I'm always hungry. But Kathy says to you, Christy, what's up with the bobby pins in your hair? You say the same thing I said, Kathy. Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, are you going to use those for later? Yeah. And you're like, yep. Yep. And she says, honey, you so want to have style and you don't. And you're like, oh, Kathy, I suggest you shut your mouth and walk away from me. And Kathy's like, oh, why? Are you going to beat me up? She's having pizza in her mouth the whole time. So <laughs> she, she talked about my style, but I'm going to talk about your class, Kathy. Talking with your mouth full. Yes. So we see you in the interview and you're saying that 
uh, Kathy comes in talking about manners and my etiquette, but she can't conduct herself like a human being. I'm trying to sit here and ignore her, but my God, it's like needles on a chalkboard. I finally, finally, I'm just like, ugh. I think I meant nails on a chalkboard. I'm just saying. Got yeah, a little probably, yes. yes. We know it. Needles, needles, needles also annoying. Yeah, that needle is. Kathy's like shooting heroin. Yeah. yeah. They never, I couldn't say that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so you and Kathy are still going back and forth. Kathy says, you don't even know me. I can read you like a book. Oh. And you're like, you're so full of shit. Please be gone. Kathy's, oh, nice language. That's what you always have to do. I got, got it from you. I learned it by watching you. you yeah. And she's like, no, I know you didn't. I mean, I could have had a better comeback. I'm very sad about my, my comeback in that situation. But you know what? <laughs> I should stop talking. Like, leave me alone. Yes. So Kathy's was, in, in. Go ahead. That was just a lot. I remember that, like, like the hall was kind of narrow. And those, the like, hall was just, yes. And I had a huge suitcase. And, yeah, <laughs> All the people. Kelly's and Kathy's eating pizza. <laughs> and it was hot as hell. <laughs> yeah. It's that terrible. like New York lovely moment when it's like, you know, snowing outside and then you get inside and you go like, they got the furnace on full blast and yeah. you like, got a strip. It like sets you on fire. Of course. <laughs> ah, good times. I know. Yes. So they show like a shot of the ballet class and you can hear all of the moms like arguing out in the hallway and the teacher does not look very happy. And we got Abby who's screaming, be quiet, yet it's her it's her voice you hear. <laughs> uh, but Kathy started it all. Oh, yeah. Like, like leave us alone. we, we were, were all behaving until she started at us. Yep. And she's yelling, be quiet, or newsflash, newsflash, newsflash. And, th- and then, do you love that she turns around and then tells me I'm always drunk? And I'm like, oh, I'm sitting here, like, minding my own business at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. Like, leave me alone. (laughs) I did see that. And she's like, you embarrass yourself every time you open your mouth. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. you're the one who opened your mouth? Yeah. Leave me alone. Then we have the teacher come out and to the hallway and yell at us. But we're being too loud. How embarrassing was that? The teacher is just like disgusted. He says that we, he tells the girls that we should never behave like the adults that are out in the hallway. Um, that we're supposed to be responsible for those children and we're just like an embarrassment. Yeah. Uh, we just love, love, love our reputation that this show helps to perpetuate. I think yes. for years still, I'm like, okay, I'm not really like I am on TV at all times, sometimes, but not always. It happens occasionally. <laughs> so then we have Abby in an interview and she says um, she's embarrassed and Kathy is unprofessional. She's loud and obnoxious and Abby doesn't want to be around her anymore. Meanwhile, I think Abby was loud and obnoxious too in there, wasn't she? Always. But then we have the teacher say again to the kids, don't let a bad influence like that influence your lives. And my poor little page says, our moms were really rude and bad. I hope they don't embarrass me again. Oh. I think somebody told her to say that. I I might have I, I might have worked so. with Paige to come up with something <laughs> yeah. along those lines. I'm thinking. I, I might have worked with Paige. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so the teacher dismisses them and we have Abby in the interview and she says that <laughs> there were three judges. Some will say something nice and some will not. Um, the girls did a great job, but now they have to focus on the competition. And then we're shown going into Starbound in New Jersey. Am I allowed to chew gum in Jersey? Because I got yelled at once for chewing gum in New York. She yelled at me that it wasn't Jersey. Oh. So yes, you, can you can have some gum. Piece of gum. You can have some gum. Chew your and gum, did boo. did you notice? What, James? Chew your gum, boo. Chew my gum, boo. Did you notice the band wasn't Kidnapper White? It was Serial Killer Black. I did see that. And did you see Abby wearing fur? Yes. Please have drink. a drink. Drink. Cheers, bitches. Cheers. Abby was wearing aggressive fur. Yes. But Abby's in an interview. She tells us that we're the national champions from Starbound and that they need to prove that, you know, that we're still Kelly. the champions. No. She said, we're the champions from Starbound. 
Yep. <laughs> she needs to blow her nose so desperately. She always does. We say that all the time. Uh, and she had that bang sausage roll. And I was laughing when she walked in because I'm like, oh, it's Valentine's Day because she had on a red shirt and a red rhinestone heart. Like, oh, it probably was Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day. Yeah. It was close, yeah. Yeah. And we're at a stupid dance competition. We can always count on Abby to really go for like that elementary school teacher vibe, you know, where you dress for the holiday. Yes. Yes. My sister used to have all them little sweaters with all the yeah. little. Yes. That's fine when you're teaching a bunch of little kids. Well, I guess maybe Abby is teaching a bunch of little kids. What all yeah. Are I think that's yeah. Bad. All right. So we walk in and we like walk right by where you check in. And Abby's like, we'll check in after we get to the dressing Bye. room. But um, when we're in the dressing room, Abby tells the girls, you know, that they're the national champions and there's a lot of good studios at the competition. And, you know. Bullshit, bullshit, they have, bullshit. They yeah. have their work cut out for them. And then we see Holly on interview and she says she's nervous about the amount of pressure that the girls are facing this week, especially with Abby constantly adding to the pressure. And did you see it back on the dry erase board, all the little things it said, like, um, Mrs. Highland love, loves Mr. Bieber and Miss, Miss Highland is amazing. And Jimmy got detention for flirting with girls. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of little notes about like who got detention. James, I wonder what yours was. If I recall correctly, this was we got the producers got yelled at after this one because there were so many like names on the bat on the uh, the blackboards uh, that then they told us like we needed to keep the girls away from writing stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That, you know, we were only in the dressing room for like nine hours. You I know. know like, God forbid they would write on the chalkboard to pass some time. Yeah, exactly. Or but have the, fun. Uh, I yeah. think the, the thing that happened with that one was that there were too many like producer and camera Names, guy yeah. names. Yeah. 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 Because I have a list over here and there's like Jimmy Chris got detention for flirting. Uh, uh, I saw Zanoni was on there. It was who? Zanoni. Yeah. Yeah, what did he get in trouble for? I, I have it. it on my list. Adisa for eavesdropping because he was a sound guy. <laughs> that was funny. Adam um, Butler for passing notes. Yeah. Andrew filming during class. That's Rack Hal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I loved Rack. Yeah. He was the know, best voice ever. Cell phones. Yeah. Brent got in trouble for talking. Yeah. I. There, it said, like, I, I think... I don't know if I had written, it looks like my handwriting, but it said like, Christy loves Maddie. Like it was all these, like there's a million notes on that board. Uh -huh. So then they show the candy apple dressing room and they're running the dance. And then Kathy puts somebody in charge of her, their props, the candles and blankets, whatever that is. Yeah, I don't know. And then um, we're in the interview and Kathy says that she thinks this routine will finally beat the ALDC. Dun, 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 foreshadowing. Yes. And they show them go into the stage. And then they show our dressing room. And we're rehearsing. And I say in my interview, we have so many interviews, this one. Yeah. Uh, this dance is a mess. The choreography doesn't showcase the girls' technique. No, because they're too busy trying to keep those props from falling over. Yeah. And then Paige says, Abby's pressuring them to win because they are the national champions for Starbound. And then we see them all carrying their big old jail props to the stage. We didn't um, even know how important of a point jail would become in Dance Moms at this point. I know. It was just kind of like a thing. I don't know why they only showed me going to jail, not you. You went to the New Orleans jail. But I didn't go to jail. I tried to have Leslie arrested. I know, but they didn't show us going to the jail for you, just for me. I uh, I just walked by that jail yesterday, and um, I'm going to buy a t-shirt there someday. I'm going to stop in and get myself a NOLA, t a NOLA PD. There you go. Yeah, I feel like I need one. So our girls are doing their dance, and Melissa's in the background, or in the audience, dancing. And me, you, and Holly are, like, not looking very happy. We're, like, looking very concerned over this performance. Holly's face, her <laughs> face in the audience are, like, brilliant. They really are. Uh-huh. But her, Holly. I mean, she, like, she seemed really, like, not 
pleased at all? No, not at all. Uh, in her interview, she said she doesn't <laughs> like the idea of her daughter being in the jail cell. And she's trying to put her feelings aside because it's a character for this piece. <laughs> always, always so politically correct. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, it was so like, I know we talked about the whole jail thing so much at nauseum with this one, but <clears throat> I don't think I ever thought twice about it. Cause it was like, so I didn't like, either. Were Chicago. like it was yeah. so obvious, like, okay, it's Chicago. Yeah. I never even thought like jail, yeah. like there's other dances that we done that I was like, Oh, Chloe, you broke Mackenzie's neck. Murder. Yeah. Okay, bad. <laughs> yeah. You, know? you committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Oh, you were the child with a gun and you shot someone. <laughs> yeah. Naughty. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh. yeah. So Holly is saying she hates the dance and Melissa goes in her interview and she's like, I love this number. I can't believe the girls acting. <laughs> they were funny though. Even though the dance was not my favorite, like I caught at the beginning, like Chloe, when she was out and the music started, she was like slowly tapping her fingers on the stage, like in Chicago. Like I thought that that kind of little details were cute. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I like my page in these kind of dances. I tell you that all the time. Like, like, did you see her like strutting on the stage? Yeah. Off the stage? <laughs> I think she's cute at those kind of dances. I hope she doesn't do them now at this age, but back then when she was 10, I didn't mind. It. <laughs> she's taken some of these uh, and repurposed I, them. I'm hoping not, but. So then the candy apples, they do their dance. And all I have to say is they were like angels. And we're, we were like hoodlums and they were like angels. And I like, like the- was that on purpose? Oftentimes we'd kind of, if I remember correctly, we would say. Like do the opposite. Abby, Abby's is kind of this, you know, do you have anything that might interact well with that? You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But what's hilarious in her interview is Jill's like. And Kendall, she's like, um, she looks like an angel. She said, Kendall looked like a little angel. She literally <laughs> said a little angel. And I'm like, Jill, she's <clears throat> actually dressed as an angel. So she did look like a little angel. Yeah, so did all the other kids in the dance. <laughs> yeah. It's just a lot. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, when you're at your best, I personally know that I feel like I can do anything. Like I can do great things, but sometimes life really gets you bogged down. Like my new Orleans project. Uh, Nothing is going right. Nothing is going right. Absolutely nothing. And I feel like it's a test and I am feeling overwhelmed. And then that is trickling into the rest of my life. Like, even when I talk to you, am I not stressed out all the time? Uh, Yeah. And you're like very discombobulated like normally you're like okay we're doing this at 10 and you're like on the spot and now you're like oh is it 10 o'clock I thought it was at 11 o'clock I know it is killing me it's killing me however you know one thing that I have found that is really helpful both during this project and also during my dance mom days is therapy like therapy really helps for sure Yeah. yeah and I don't care that I go to my therapist for everything. I really do. Like whatever is bothering me, I will talk about the weather if it's bothering me. And yeah. There. I mean, it definitely makes you feel better. I noticed that even just us talking about like the show and stuff, it makes me feel better. So I'm sure a therapist would make me feel way better than talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Hello, Kelly. Yes. Yeah. A therapist, or a therapist is actually qualified. Yes. So if you are thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. Actually, my therapist is from BetterHelp and I love her. She is absolutely amazing. She's one of the best therapists I've ever had. Well, that's great for you because it's all online. So yeah. you can do it from wherever you're at. So it's flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Exactly. So all you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you don't like that therapist, or, you know, if you just feel like something better is out there for you, you can switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash bar today to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp.com. H E L P dot com slash bar B A R R E. 
So Kathy, in her interview, she says that I'm pretty much on the edge of my seat right now. My palms are sweaty and my butt's shaking. This is what happens when I get nervous. Her butt was shaking. My butt <laughs> never shaken through nerves in my whole life. How about you two? Yeah, you no. have a shaky butt? Mine jiggles when I walk, but it's not because I'm nervous. Right. It's because I'm fat. Nah. Kelly, people uh, so, pay a lot of money for an ass like that these days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then we're at group awards and we see Abby in an interview and she says that she thinks Kathy's going to beat us. And then they announce 10th place. And we have like a pause and it's the ALDC. Uh, uh, scored 286 points. Mm. To be Abby's fair, in, I don't think we'd ever gone 10th place. Ever. I, ever. ever. But Abby's in an interview and she says she's humiliated um, since they were the, we were the national championships for Starbound. Um, maybe the judges just didn't get the dance and, you know, that's their right. But maybe, they maybe we just shouldn't do. Like it. Huh? Maybe they did get it and they just didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the same thing with the fan dance. Like she, she said that about that. Like, you know, the judges have different opinions. But I, I'm thinking it's like kind of like a trend. They don't like inappropriate dances for that age that's what i'm i would think <clears throat> yeah it's a it's a challenge to uh again like the don't over sexualize you know yeah preteens. yeah um so then they announced ninth place and it is the candy apples and there was only one point difference they got a 287 just a, and- a rousing endorsement of kathy's uh, choreography skills of Rabbies by the uh, the star <laughs> the star judges. Yeah, I'm literally, like it's one point. It's one point. Yes, you make sure you tell her that when she comes into our dressing room. One point, and uh, she, I like she said every dog has its day. Yeah, and you're yes. like Kathy's dreams came true today. Finally, they can say they beat us and they can leave us alone. <laughs> Exactly. Remember keep that dream alive. What? Then they can leave us alone. I said, yeah, keep that dream alive. Yeah. And um, Holly points out that the last time they didn't place um, was when AODC competed electricity. And mm-hmm. you sarcastically in your interview say, shocker, the group came in 10th. Mm-hmm. And Abby says that um, neither one of them is dancing to their potential. Are, are, you, are Do you think she's talking about Chloe and Maddie? I don't know. Because she, she definitely said neither one of them are dancing to their potential. And they haven't been, you know, all year. But I don't know what that meant by either one. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I. Oh, yeah. Neither one. Of them, yeah. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I have no I idea. I don't either. No, oh, well, who cares? We don't care what she thinks anyways. So <laughs> Candy Apples comes into our dressing room to congratulate us. How nice of them. And. We see Abby about ready to cry and she's like licking her lips and like all flustered. And um, you and Holly thank her for coming in and, you know, congratulating us. But you make sure you point out about the one point higher. And, you know, Kathy and her kids and moms and whatever leave and they say, we saw, we came, we kicked apples. And then (laughs) Abby likes, Screams stop Satan or whatever while she's sitting there crying. None of that happened at this point. Abby crying and yelling Satan. That was all after Maddie forgot her dance. This she, Abby did not cry and yell at Kathy at this point. I they promise. moved it into a, an editing. I promise you. She she called Brian Satan. I s- distinctly remember that. Oh really? Yeah. And they just made it look like it was at Kathy. Sure. James. <sighs> Sorry, I muted because my dog was barking again. Oh, that's uh, okay. I, like I said in the last one, like where posts would use things that happened as to try to further storylines. Yeah. I think yeah. this is the same thing where it's like, you know, obviously they can't play Abby calling Brian Stinson Satan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So then we see Abby's, you know, Crying and saying that her entire reputation of dancing is, and she's humiliated, and she she leaves. 
again, because the judges at Starbound, Paramus, New Jersey have such wide ranging, wide ranging control over, you know, the entire dance community. It's right. Different. Yeah. Obviously everyone's career is completely over. Oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> so then Christy's phone rings and we get a she gets a phone call from the Joffrey judges and Chloe comes running over. She was so cute. She was like, because you had her on them on speaker, so we can all hear. And they show you an interview saying that Chloe is excited for the opportunity, but she's trying not to act too excited. She doesn't want to hurt anybody else's feelings since they wanted this opportunity too, mm -hmm. which was sweet. But it's such a shame because like she should have been able to be excited. You know what I mean? Like I, I hate that she felt that way because I mean, it was an exciting moment for her and she had to hold back. So people didn't feel bad. Yeah. But I mean, I think too, I, I totally agree with you, but I also know too, that the girls knew how it felt to not get things like each, yeah. of, each of them. So then yeah. they tried to like be mindful of other people, you know, I just yeah. think they were aware. I, I do. Yeah. Um, on the phone call, the guy says that um, Chloe has potential to become a beautiful ballerina and that they want to assist in making that happen. And then we go to Holly in an interview and she says, not getting a role that you audition for is part of a dam dancer's life, but it's tough. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> okay, go ahead. I'm going to make a note, something I'm going to bring up on Patreon. Okay. Uh, so you hang up and they go to... Um, Melissa accusing Maddie of being a brat. And Maddie's Wait, like, I no. Maddie of being a brat? No, no, Melissa. Oh, 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 oh. Melissa. And Maddie's like, you know, I'm just trying to organize my thing. And Melissa's like, go behind the curtain, you know, which is our changing camera, which Melissa always did. It was either go to the bathroom or go behind a curtain, something, just because she didn't want her to be seen on camera. Yeah, that was always you know, being was upset or. Yeah. frustrated i forgot so about that you are. yeah i forgot about that but now that you say it there was like the the constant like oh, she always went and hid them yeah always. yeah always i don't know somehow i could never hide i've tried to hide behind a dumpster and you guys still found me <laughs> <sighs> um so we have an interview with maddie and she says that she's upset that chloe got the draw free uh scholarship but Maddie thinks she deserves to be on the top. I'm assuming that means the pyramid. I, I would assume. But Melissa's behind the curtain. She's saying that, you know, Maddie's going to lose her phone for 10 days. And, you know, her and Maddie are arguing back and forth. And she changes it to 15 days. And I don't know about you guys, but I thought the, that whole thing was stupid. I mean, I, I think Maddie was just upset. Like, leave her alone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the but she was nine at that juncture in time. Like, yeah, you know, nine -year -old like, it can be. And, and Maddie, we we see this in all the past episodes. When when the kids have something big going on and they get flustered, they all get upset like that. Every every one of them. I mean, she's a, a child, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we go to the Candy Apples dressing room, and Kendall is rehearsing her solo, and. Jill says that she loves Kendall's solo and has a lot of style and technique. And Kendall is um, doing her elbow stand and she starts to cry. And she, you know, it's like, I can't, I can't do it. She just feels like she's not prepared. And Kathy's like, you know, don't cry that you are prepared. And um, it's about being the apples, being your buddies. What? And Kendall, what? I'm like, wait, what? Being the apples, being your being buddies. buddies. Yeah, I don't know. But um, Kendall's complaining that her costume's too tight, and Kathy and Joe are both like, it's only two minutes. Like, live through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Jill is actually like getting short with Kendall at this point. She's like, oh, Kendall, you know, like she's getting flustered. Yeah. Like, yeah, just like go out. It's two minutes. And I have to say, I think this is a little like fourth wall info. But when Kathy is leaning down in Kendall's face and she's like, it's totally not worth it as Kendall's like starting to cry. I think Kathy really is referring to the show, Kendall. Like, this is not worth it. Do not get stressed out. Which, yeah, yes, Kathy is the devil. Kathy is evil. Kathy is all the things that she's supposed to be as far as the villain. And I'm using that in air quotes on Dance Moms. But I think at the end of the day, Kathy knew 
like how to try to get through to the kids. Like this is not a big deal. Like she didn't take it that seriously, which is why Kathy was fun to fight with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I thought she was being kind to Kendall there. Like truly like, yeah, not worth it. Yeah. Which, which most dance teachers do do. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just not ours. So then we're back in the ALDC dressing room and Gianna comes in and says um, that we have five to 10 minutes before we need, they need to be on stage. And you're like, no way is that happening. Chloe's costume is like 17 pieces and you have to pin it all. And yeah, uh, Gianna says, you know, that they're at the end of the category. So she doesn't know that they can hold the numbers. And you're just like, no way. There's no way I could do this with this kind of costume. And I'm standing there holding my big plastic needle to sew in her crown because I had to sew yeah. in her headpiece. Yeah. Everybody always asked about sewing them in. Like we use plastic darning needles. Yeah. You know, to sew it in. Yeah. And, and like also, a, a thick, I, I used to use like embroidery. Yeah, me too. Yarn or whatever thread. Yeah, me too. I got the color to match their hair, whatever. Yep. Yep. Um. <laughs> I did want to point out, which we missed, that uh, Jill is wearing a sequin skirt. Oh, I missed that. Oh, yeah. It's really tight. It's sequined. Yeah. We always say that um, Jill always wore every kind of thing. Like, she would have fur, leather, sequins, uh, you know, 19 different patterns on in one outfit. <laughs> Jill was an aggressive um, mixer yes. and matcher with the, uh, <laughs> the colors and the patterns and the Yep. So Chrissy, you're an interview and you say that Abby barks and barks and barks and barks and barks um, at us and we need that we need to be prepared. Well, you need to give us enough time to be prepared. And I don't think that was really Abby. I think that was kind of the yeah. show kind of making us rush, trying to fluster us, you know, because that happened a lot. Exactly. Um, but Maddie's working with Abby and Abby's given her corrections and Chloe goes and gets changed. And Melissa's like, they had 15 minutes to get the, our kids ready and rehearse. And she's getting tired of it and sick of it. I, I was, she was talking about you producers. <laughs> when she said that, I think. Mm, I think. <laughs> we see Abby doing Maddie's, um, was that her abs she was doing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think she was doing her abs. I still need to paint them on myself. Abby and Abby's such a bitch. Chloe comes out and Abby whispers to Maddie, don't look. That's a lot of costume oh, talking about fucking gossips with their student who's nine years old about, about another student. The other student. It's a lot. Especially when you're the one like you didn't pick out that costume. No. So and they're going head to head. Too. They're going yeah. head to head. So she's like, oh, Maddie, that's a lot of costume. Like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like, she's going to have to struggle with that. Like, like that, to me, perpetuates exactly what we've been saying. If people paid attention and, like, really looked at what Abby was doing, that's so inappropriate. Yeah. That's totally right. inappropriate. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just like, why, why would you as a dance teacher, like, you know, it's... It's the same thing we've said on the entire time. It's like, why are you hamstringing one of your students? Yeah. You know, you're trying to benefit one of your students at the expense of your other student. Like, it's just. It, yeah, you're supposed to compete against the opposite team, not yeah. not your same team so, members. So against Kathy, not against. Yeah, exactly. But we see Kendall come on stage for her solo. And we see her at the interview and you say, Kendall comes out and she is the queen of hearts. Kathy has been, Kathy, we've been down this road before. Stop copying my daughter. Um, no, did you got, you guys obviously told her to do the same Queen of Hearts, right? I believe. I would think I believe so. we'd said there was a, like, ALCC is doing a Queen of Hearts number. You should think about something along the same lines. Yeah. Uh, so Kendall finishes and Abby's like, Kathy is up to her, you know, tricks again. She's trying to get ahead in the competition. It's like off with her head. <clears throat> oh, I forgot she said that. Yeah. So Chloe and Maddie are going to the stage for their solos. And Abby tells them to focus and represent her. And Maddie goes on stage. And 
um, in the middle of the dance, she forgets it and stops and starts crying and runs off the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and we hear Maddie frantically. It's so- it, 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 it makes me sick to listen to how terrified that mm-hmm. child was that she forgot her dance. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was like terrified. Abby's going to hate me, you know, um, you know, this never happened to me before. Please, please, let, like, me, please let me, please, please let me do it again. I got to do it again. I got to do it again. You know, I, she, it, it, it I was, mean, our kids were upset. I mean, obviously any child that forgets their dance on stage, it's humiliating and embarrassing and, you know, you feel bad and, but she was terrified. Yeah. yeah. She was losing it, which was yeah. hard. It's hard to watch. Like, it is. Yeah. It's like yes. nine year old. Like, yes. It, it's she terrible. Was, like, you know, she's Jay Z was with her. You can see like one of the producers trying yeah. to help her, which I'm sure he was told to get away from her. Yeah. But she was literally like the panic in her, like Matt, and she kept saying, Abby's going to hate me. Yeah. Abby's yeah. going to hate me. That was her concern. Yeah. yeah. That was so her main you know, concern. She probably had watched, you know, the way Abby treated her friends for years and she did not want to be in that category. You know, Abby's going to hate me. And she knew that Abby put so much pressure on her to win that it was like, she's like, uh, it was probably like twofold. I don't want to be treated like that, but also like she depends on me for her happiness. You know, yeah. like that's yeah. really, I think how it was presented to her. It was really, yeah. it was, that was tough to watch. Yeah. 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 Now, one thing I will say, and I did not get into a deep dive on this at all. So for anybody who's out there, who's going to come for us, I know that, um, I don't know, one of those undercover people who do like deep dive analysis of the show have all these theories about like all of the things that happened to make Maddie forget her dance. And it was like, this was set up and I have not watched it. I have no idea. All I know. And we talked about this in the other episode was supposedly she had said that the the jib, which is the camera, came too close to her. And I don't know what other issues they had said. Uh, and that was the reason. But I don't know. I I, I, I don't think that was the reason because we, we, we danced with jibs for two years now at this point. So we were pretty much used to it being there. And it never, it never bothered us from day one. The kids just, and I just think it was a hard week. You know, and it she, was a really hard week. Yeah. And and I feel I like, think, okay. sorry. No, go ahead. No, it's just like when, especially when anything happened with Maddie, <clears throat> I feel like Melissa and Abby kind of became like the, the echo chamber where it's like, oh, it's who can we blame? And then yeah. like, you know, the producers are the convenient scapegoat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. I just think that it was a bad week and she was tired and she was nervous about the Joffrey thing and all of that kind of stuff. So and it happens to all of us, Maddie. But, but it was also it was the end of it was the end of that, like since season. It was our season break. Yeah. Yeah. Like we'd been going strong. We were from, all exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I read. <laughs> So when we see Maddie being all upset, Melissa gets up and, you know, goes to see Maddie and Abby's just sitting in her seat, just like shaking her head. Like she just couldn't believe that that had happened to her. And I'm in an interview and I say that I'm not surprised that Maddie forgot her dance. Um, Melissa and Abby always put too much pressure on her. She's nine years old and every single week she has a solo, a duet, a trio and a group member. And Abby wants Maddie to win, but doesn't care that she's burning her out in the process. And I stand by that. I, I mean, and Chrissy, we say this all the time. Doing a solo, a duet, and a group dance is an awful lot. And then, you know, they always expect Maddie to win. I mean, I, yeah. I do think that's a lot of pressure on her. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I said, um, I did say, like, Chloe has the same amount of dances, but she's just told she sucks. She doesn't have to win. <laughs> so it's a different pressure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, um, so we see Abby, you know, starting to tear up again, and she's licking her lips like crazy, like she doesn't know what to do with herself. Um, and then we hear Chloe's solo music, and 
um, Melissa and Kenzie are backstage with Maddie and um, she's saying that Melissa's, you know, complaining that it's not fair because they just threw Maddie out there. And all I have to say about that is Maddie was prepared. She had her dance ready and she had her costume and everything. She should be in the situation that you get your music the morning of the dance. That's not being prepared. I, I did not say being that. prepared of being thrown on on stage in two minutes is, is not a, a big deal. Yeah. You know, I mean, like Brooke has been thrown on and without a costume on it had two seconds to change and, and get thrown on something like that is a little more frantic than just yeah. rushing from the dressing room to and, the behind stage. And I have notes like, I, I literally wrote, are you kidding me? Like, try the situation that the other kids have had to endure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just like, it's not fair. And she calls the cameraman an asshole. She's like, assholes. You know, yeah. like, and again, these were our frustrations because it was fine, fine when our kids did it. And when we complained, we were just bitter bitches. Mm-hmm. But when it's not our kids, when it's someone else, then it's this huge deal and everyone's in this mass conspiracy. Yeah. So, we see Chloe rehearsing and um, we Chloe goes to interview and she says that she found out that Maddie forgot her number and she was nervous because of all the chaos behind stage. Um, but all she could do is cross her fingers. And we see, you know, Maddie and Melissa and them all leave and Chloe is announced. And you say that in the audience, um, you can see that Abby is crying hysterically. And you say that I thought, you were supposed to save your tears for your pillow lab, which really? I love that. That's my favorite line because she always told us that. And we're sitting and there. And they're nine years old. She's 40 something. She's sobbing, literally yes. sobbing like with that. Yes. And she's not paying attention to Chloe dancing. She doesn't give a shit how Chloe does. Yeah. All well, she's having a pity party. Hey, at least she stayed. She, as that soon as Chloe true. got done dancing. They we weren't even done, done clapping, and Abby was out the door. I, I did actually kind of note that I was like, "Oh, I'm actually shocked she stayed." Yeah, I suspect the producers told her, to stay. but I think she wanted to stay and see how Chloe did to see because she knew Chloe was going to win at that point. So I think she wanted to see like what would happen. That's why she left as soon as the applause started. Would be my thing. But you're in an interview, and you say, "Let me think." Mia forgot her solo. Abby didn't cry. Paige forgot her solo. Abby didn't cry. Chloe forgot her solo. Abby didn't cry. Maddie forgets her solo and it's waterworks. Abby only cares about one person. And that is the blatant display of that. And we say it every time. Every it day. I, I mean, like that was, I mean, seriously, like any other kid forgot their dance and they're like stupid and, you know, not I'm just responsible. Like, I am just giving that, that is everything I said is factual. Yes, I agree. And oh, we got a drink because when Abby's leaving the auditorium, she has a, a fur purse again. I saw that fur purse. James, you're going to need a refill. I know. Shit. <laughs> um, okay, so we see Chloe, you know, going behind the curtain and she's, you know, talking to Maddie, comforting her or whatever. And then Chloe in interview says um, she feels so bad for Maddie because she knows exactly how it feels. Uh, We all have done it and nobody's perfect. And we see, we hear Melissa behind the curtain, you know, talking to Maddie and Maddie's crying and Maddie or Melissa is like, dance is your whole life. And it shouldn't be, this is way too much pressure, but they miss. She allows that to happen. Yes. Yes. I, I agree with that. I don't know. But in Melissa in the interview says, it's really hard to watch your daughter crying and saying she's a failure and she's nine years old. She's not a failure when you're not a failure when you're nine years old. And um, Maddie kept saying that Abby's going to hate her and it breaks her heart. Okay, so here we go. She said, it really is really hard when your daughter is crying and thinks she's a failure and she's nine years old. I deal with that every fucking week, Melissa. You know, like seriously. Yeah, it, I know how you feel. It breaks my heart. Yep. You did yep. it once. Yeah, and I'm I do it every other freaking day. Yeah, like a mental... My thing. daughter used to drive home, every, even if it wasn't a major thing during the day. We would drive home, a 20-minute ride home from the studio. Almost every single night, my kids would be crying in the car mm-hmm. on the way home. 
oh. to deal with that every day. Absolutely. And you can even watch in this episode, you can see how many times Chloe cracks her knuckles and just looks. Because she's nervous. Yeah. 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 Um, so then we see Abby. She comes back and she comes into the dressing room and um, she's talking to Abby. And Melissa complains because she says she didn't hear them even announce her daughter. And Abby's like, you know, quit making excuses. Every kid forgets their dance. It's not a big deal. Please stop. Shoot Please me in the head. Stop. <laughs> Please uh, stop. It's I'm not sorry. a big deal. I'm literally like... I wish I would have did a clip of the flashback of when Paige forgot hers. Uh-huh. And, and showed it. Because it was a big deal. Uh, uh-huh. uh-huh. And she did exactly the same thing. Paige ran off stage. So did Maddie. So did Nia. They all did the same thing. And that's the only one that... And when Chloe didn't run off stage, she got in trouble. She was got in trouble for that. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So Maddie comes out of the dressing room and she's crying and apologizing. And Melissa says that um, she says to Abby that Maddie thinks that she hates her. And Abby calls her sweetheart and gives her a big hug. And she says, you know, that she doesn't hate her and it's not her fault. I the next part takes my heart and like I can barely even think about how badly this hurt my daughter to be in that room. And watch in the corner, like just sit there and observe all of this. And you can see Chloe, like put her head down on her makeup station and just kind of like in the corner by herself, watching all of this, like love and support and just feeling like a piece of garbage. It yeah. made me, it's still even just reading it made yeah. my stomach not it's yeah. really, really awful. And it's what, 11, 12 years later, 10 years. I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah. this I could feel like a physical reaction to this um, this is what you're talking about those kids that have perfect runs and win everything when they're kids where are they now they don't even dance anymore kids that have something to shoot for and win they are the ones who are still working no I'm not talking about that I'm talking about like in between Chloe put her head down but her saying that is such bullshit because then our kids should be the favorite because exactly. they're the ones that have something to work for. They're the ones that have something to work for. Yes, I agree. Oh, no. Now this is when she puts her head on her vanity. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Um, so Abby's in an interview. She says, Maddie screwed up just like everybody else. But now maybe they won't all be vultures and come after her all the time. Away from me. It turns it into something negative for us. Yeah. Like we won't be vultures. Maybe she won't be a vulture now after our kids because not everybody's perfect. She just seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Maddie's just like everybody else. Yeah. I, I literally want to like reach through and punch her. Yeah. So all the rest of the kids and stuff come into the dressing room. We leave, you know, the auditorium and they all go over to Maddie and, you know, comfort her and stuff. And Abby tells them to stop that they're not going to play that game. And, um, you know, the kids are all hugging Maddie and Chloe and Kenzie and all them. And we all, the moms all come in and Holly says that she's also not playing these games. And she points out, you know, that Abby didn't cry when Nia ran off the stage in tears because she forgot her solo. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. And she doesn't care. And that's what Holly says. Yeah. And ho- that, yeah, Holly says she knows that Abby doesn't care. And that's her point. That's like the whole thing she was going for. Yeah. And in an interview, Holly says, it's cruel that Abby is sitting here having a pity party for herself when Maddie forgot her dance. Every other kid has experienced that and they could have used a dance teacher who cared about them. Agree 100%, Holly. So Gianna takes the kids, you know, to the awards and you and Holly are saying, you know, that forgetting your dance is humiliating and it's happened to every kid on the team. And Holly wants to know, you know, the issue that Abby only cried over Maddie. Like, why didn't you cry when Nia forgot hers? Why is it only Maddie? Because we're jealous. Yeah. I was actually, when you guys were going back and forth, I was actually sitting there very calm until the end. Um, Holly says, these children, these are children. And you just cry for whatever reason, for one child and not the other. But they all hurt the same. And you say, the kids know. 
Mm-hmm. And Holly says, it's, it was obvious and transparent. I tried to deny it for many years and give Abby excuses saying that's just the way she teaches. And that's just the way she is. But today it was black and white. It's not the way she teaches for all. It's a double standard and a different system. It is not equal. Mm-hmm. And then I speak up and I don't know why I have to open my mouth just, and yeah. say, you know, why don't you care about the other kids? And I, I, and I think you can tell in the way that I'm saying this, I really and truly like I wasn't saying it to be a bitch. No, I was you were seriously, asking. my feelings were hurt that she could feel, especially because she was friends with my kids mm-hmm. for so and me for so long. How can you feel that way over one kid and not mine? And I just, I, I really didn't mean it to be mean, but no, you were very like, it, you sounded very sincere and like, Abby, why? Yeah. I just wanted to know, like, what, what is it that we do wrong that you don't care? Yeah. You know, she was, I remember her bawling and she's like, she's going to ruin, they're going to ruin her career. They're going to ruin her. They're going to ruin this child. They're going to ruin her. They're sacrificing her. And yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, I remember just being like, oh my God. Yeah. It was, it was wild. Like we knew things, but this was such an eye opening display. Yeah. That Holly in her interview said for once, Abby was speechless because she knew she was wrong. And Gianna comes and, you know, gets us for awards. And Abby just is sitting there crying. Well, wait a minute. I have to say one thing, though. Um, When you said that uh, you said you didn't care. Why don't you care that the other kids forget their dances, but you care about Maddie? And Melissa says she said she didn't care. Um, when, when, when Maddie forgot and, and I just want to point out that was completely Melissa playing with words because what you were saying is you didn't care, like care, like be sad for my kids when they were hurting. And Melissa was saying, well, she didn't care that Maddie forget, forgot her dance. She still loves Maddie. But do you see how Melissa played with those words? She said, Oh no, Abby said she didn't care about Maddie forgetting her dance. And I'm like, no, two totally different insinuations with that phrase. Totally. I don't know if anybody caught that, but I did. And I was like, that's the kind of stuff that she would do because she did say she didn't care, but it meant it was a totally different under meaning. And I'll step off my soapbox. Okay. So we go to awards and they're doing the junior solos and they show Joe in an interview saying that Kendall was a star on stage and she shined. Um, she did what she came to do. And you say, Chloe was amazing as the Red Queen. She was evil, regal, and her technique was good. I did like this dance. Yeah. My favorite costume of the whole show that she had. You know, a lot of costume. It's my favorite. Yeah. I don't know. I liked all of her costumes. Um, so did you notice where, where the awards, they stayed uh, seventh place. And they announced Queen of Hearts. But they didn't say which Queen of Hearts. They kind of like did like a little pause and you're wondering, you know, is it Chloe's Queen of Hearts or Kendall's? Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay. But it was Kendall got seventh place. And Jill says in her interview, it was difficult to compete against Abby, but um, she wouldn't, she would have loved for Kendall to have been in the top five. And then they showed Chloe getting first place. I think they, I think they called it Red Queen. Yeah, it was Red Queen. Chloe Not was Queen of Hearts. Kendall was Queen of Hearts. Chloe was Red Queen. Oh, so they weren't called the same thing. Oh, I thought they were both Queen of Hearts. Was it the music was called Queen of Hearts or something? I think they both revolved around the Queen of Hearts. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I thought they were both Queen of Hearts. but um, So Chloe's in an interview and she says it's been a while since she got first and she was very happy and it felt really good. And you say that you were very proud of her for winning, um, especially since she was at the bottom of the pyramid for forgetting her solo last week. But Abby is nowhere to be seen. I should shut up and count my, you know, thank my lucky stars. Yes. Um, so the moms, you know, we were walking back to the dressing room, but we're mad because Abby missed the awards. Hmm. And, um, you know, we think that she should have been there to support Chloe. And. You know, I mean, all the kids. She should have been there for all the kids. Mm -hmm. But so Holly says, um, you always tell the girl, I guess, I guess now we go, are we going out to the car? And we go out and see her getting in the van or the taxi? 
No, think- no, no. We're still we're still in the dressing room. We Abby hasn't left yet because she oh. has asked Kat, uh, Holly to paddle her. Oh, which oh my god, which makes me want to puke. Yes. Yeah. I cannot get it out of my brain. I every time I close my eyes, I see it. It's I'm gonna have to do some like immersion therapy to scrub it from my like consciousness. <laughs> consciousness, yes. So we're not there yet. So this is still in the dressing room. Okay. So Holly says, um, you always tell the girls to save their tears for their pillows or in their hotel rooms. You should show that behavior to them. You should have sat in front in the front row and put your game face on. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, like like you said, she always tells us, save yeah. your tears for your pillow. And they're nine and you're 40. She was more old, older than that at that point. But yeah. Yeah. So that's when Abby stands up and turns around and sticks her butt in everybody's face and says, paddle me, paddle me. And Get it she, Holly says, I'll, I'll give you a tongue lashing and no. shame on you. Holly says, please, that's a visual I don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, I'll give you the tongue lashing and shame on you. That's what you give the girls. Yeah. And she's going paddle, paddle, take the paddle. What? Well, at least you know what Abby's like on a date. Yeah. He's <laughs> 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 just visibly recoiled. <laughs> so Abby's in an interview view and she says she has nothing to say to the moms and she doesn't care if we hurt, if she hurt our feelings. Um, if we don't want their kids to, you know, to be, if, if we want our kids to be nur- oh my God, I can't even talk nurtured, nurtured, oh my God, or coddled, um, they should take them back to nursery school. But you tell Abby that, um, she can't always tell the girls to act professional and grow up when she doesn't, you know, do the same thing. And Abby just sits there and you're like, unbelievable. That's right. It is. And Holly said, no, no, it's not. And she, she couldn't sit there and say nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so the girls come back in and Abby goes, you know, to walk towards the door and you say, congratulations to Chloe. And, you know, we say everybody's proud of her. And then you're in an interview and you say, Abby didn't say anything to congratulate Chloe. It was all about Maddie. It amazes me, but there's no favoritism. No, not at all. I'm just jealous. That's all it is. I'm just jealous. As long as you own it. Yes, I, exactly. I don't, I don't know why people watch the show. I, maybe because I lived it. But when I watch that and I watch this whole episode, I don't see any jealousy. I, I see different treatment. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why when other people watch it, they see that as jealousy. I'm going to tell you why, Kelly. And I'm going to probably piss a lot of people off because these are people who just listen to Abby and Melissa say the words. They're jealous. They're jealous. They're jealous. And they're like, oh, they must be jealous. And they're not making their own, like they're not drawing their own conclusions based on the evidence that they're watching. They're just like, oh, Abby said she's jealous. She must be jealous when it's obvious what we're saying and doing. At least that's my mm-hmm. Okay. So Abby stands up and she's leaving and she says, see on the flip side. We see Abby outside and there's a taxi pulling up and we come out and we say, you say, you know, we're all trying to talk to her. You say in your interview, it's funny when things don't go Abby's way, she runs home. It's ridiculous to leave because you're embarrassed of how we were were acting. About what? About how we were, you were acting or behaving. She's embarrassed about how I was behaving. I, I don't remember. It's saying. ridiculous to leave because you're embarrassed of how you were behaving. I don't know. That's what oh, I. Oh, 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 it's ridiculous oh. for you to leave, Abby, when you're yeah. you're just embarrassed about how yeah. you were okay. acting. I didn't understand. Yes, yes. Um, and she's going to the airport. Yeah, she, we asked where she's going. She says she's going to the airport. Um, she needs a break from the moms and the kids and all the yelling. And I'm like, what should we tell the kids? And she's like, your kids will be fine without her. They've been trained and they know what to do. I'm in an interview and I say that um, I'm shocked. I know, you know, I've known Abby, Abby for a long time and I've never seen her act like this. And then we see Abby just driving off in the taxi. With the back of the taxi bumper hanging off. Because we yeah. <laughs> don't have the Bravo budget. Yeah, it's yes. dangling, it's fluttering in the breeze. 
Yes. Uh, first of all, I think it's funny that she said that she needs a break from the yelling. Hi, guess what? You're the one who yells. Yeah. You yell, you yell, you yell. Um, yeah, I hated this episode on a lot. Me of too. It made me feel so it's a long episode. Oh a long God. episode. And it's a heavy gross episode. It makes me feel this. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. How many drinks did you need to get through it? Oh, no, me. because Go ahead, James. Eight? Yeah. I said me, definitely like probably three or four. Yeah. God. I don't think I needed too too many. Nothing really happened with my kids other than I knew they weren't gonna have a chance at the Joffrey because of their routines that they had. I needed about 18 to get through it when it was happening in real time. Yeah. Uh, but to even watch it, I'm telling you, that scene of Abby just being so I don't know, it, it hurt. I think had Chloe not been in the room, it wouldn't have bothered me, but that scene really bothered me. Really bothered me. So it's definitely a couple of drinks for me for this one. I hated this episode, which is sad because this should have been a really good episode for me because Chloe yeah. got the scholarship and yeah. the solo. First place on our solo, yeah. No, I think it was just because it was so blatant to see what was going on. And it hurt me because you know, as well as I do, that all those kids wanted was oh. that validation. And it just I, every it. one of those kids knew the favoritism right there. I mean, it was how, how could you not? Yeah. So I think that was so hard. Yeah, I agree. So hard. Um. Okay. So bottom of the pyramid for outfits. Kathy, we did this yesterday. No, we did it for what part we saw. Oh my god! I, didn't we all have the same outfit on? I don't know, but I'll tell you who's at the top of my pyramid for outfits. Who? The Red Queen costume. That's my favorite. There you go. That's my favorite. I don't know. I didn't really look. Um, or the bottom of the pyramid could have been Jill's sequin skirt. You said Kathy's outfit. What was she wearing? I just remember Kathy's outfit being. I can't remember what she was wearing. I just remember having a reaction, being like, oh, that was a lot. We'll go with that. I can't remember what it was specifically. We can go with that. Sounds good to me. How about um, favorite sayings? I like when Chloe said, nobody's perfect. That's cute. Uh, I also liked, I liked just everything Holly said to Abby. Like, because it was everything that we were thinking. And I think Holly loved that scene up, down, inside out. Because it wasn't you or I. Because when it's you or I. We're the jealous bitches. But yeah. when Holly says it, even though Holly might be saying the exact same thing that you and I are saying, her delivery is much different. Yes. <laughs> yes. And absolutely. so therefore, it's the voice of reason. Reason. I liked what Paige said. Um, it's weird being in jail since I've never been there before. Yeah, that's cute. And I liked... Save the tears for your pillow app. Oh, yeah. I, I, both of you, ho- you and Holly both said that same. The tears for your pillow. That that is definitely my favorite because, God, she used to say that to our kids constantly. Mm-hmm. And here she and is. Mommy's not there for you. Mommy, mommy, mommy. But it's funny because when I got in that fight with Abby and I had to meet her at the donut store, James, you weren't here yet. She brought her mom, but she yeah. like mocks our kids for needing their mom, and she brought her mom, and then she told at, her, at forty years old. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. Did you have any felonies oh. or misdemeanors? I don't think so. Um, I would say my misdemeanor was in the hallway with Kathy because I was like arguing with Kathy at the Joffrey. Yeah, I was arguing with her too at the Joffrey. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> like she just doesn't stop. It's relentless. It's re- it's like a bird pecking at your eyes. Yeah. Constantly. It yeah. is. Or is somebody picking a scab and you're just like, I'm going to bleed. Stop it. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to head over to the after show and have a much lighter conversation over there. Yes. And God. And I, I have, I'm complaining. I told you I was not doing this episode. I've done two in a row. You okay. have to do two in a row now. I did two in a row not long ago. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You're full of below. We got mixed up on counts and I ended up doing two in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did two in a row. 
Well, you didn't really do two episodes in a row because this was all one episode. Oh, okay. But it was four hours. Wow. All right. We'll 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 duke it out in the streets of New Orleans. We'll see who yeah. wins. All right, James. We'll get you on the after party. Rock on. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Back to the Bar. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you love to listen to your podcasts. And check out our YouTube channel, Back to the Bar, if you want to watch the episodes. The channel is linked in our show notes. And if you want to join our weekly after party, where we dish even more dirt, like naked pizza, hell. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash back to the bar. See you next time. See you next time. Baby, I just want to dance, dance.